So in the past, I have discussed, um, not in full length on here, but more on Instagram, that uh, I wasn't sure which direction we were going with history because quite frankly, I'm not into a lot of the history curriculums that are out there for us to choose from. Especially with my children being so young, most of the ones that I would be interested in are more for older elementary and up. So I thought long and hard about what I wanted to do to meet history standards and to teach it in general. And here's what I came up with. So first of all, to be clear on this video, like I said, my kids are quite young. We're talking early elementary, okay, and younger. I have a three-year-old, no, now she's four. I have a four-year-old and a seven-year-old. And so they're quite young, right? They're quite young, um, first grade and preschool. I don't have a crazy need to get in depth, but still I think the things I'm going to say will pertain to a lot of people in different ages uh, that may feel similar to how I feel. So uh, where to start? <laughs> So first of all, my children, like I said, they're young. There's no need for us to go into really crazy in-depth history yet. Um, so I have time to think about what I'm going to do when we want to go thoroughly in-depth and further into uh, the uh, complexity of history, I guess I should say. Um, because we're still hitting on heavy subjects now. And if you follow me on Instagram, I talk more about it on there than here. But basically, um, I don't sugarcoat history for my children. We offer emotional support and we also, when we do share those horrible parts of history, we just make sure that it's not too graphic just because of their age. And over time we'll progress into how graphic it gets depending on the subject. So when it comes to war or um, African American studies that have things involved like lynchings and things like that, um, those things we tread lightly on visuals and being too descriptive, but we still make them aware of those subjects when they come up. Now, the thing about that as well is I don't, I don't want history to always be this negative thing, right? History does have a lot of negativity. Humanity is full of mistakes and pride and selfish, selfishness, not selflessness. Um, it's full of a lot of those really dark parts of humanity and uh, a lot of pivotal moments in history and important periods have a lot to do with negative things. But there's always also um, ways to show the beauty in the midst of craziness. And um, I'm, I'm working on how to create that so that they still understand that there were bad things that happened, but we can always find the good, right? Um, but that's a subject, I don't know if I'll get into it too much in this video based off the first study we're doing, but basically here's what I plan to do. We're going to be what I like to call chasing history. Um, so what I mean by that is, first of all, uh, like I said, they're very young. There's no need for me to do these massive all out there history plans just yet. Um, so what we're doing is chasing history in Ohio. And, uh, what do I talk about in this? Hmm trying to think if this should be a whole separate video but for the example our first study that we're chasing is uh the underground railroad and i will actually yeah i'll do a whole separate video on the details of that but i want to what i want to say is we all know there are no pros to slavery i don't care what any of these curriculums say right because we've seen them try to put a spin on them and give you the pros of of enslaved humans and they try to kind of um downgrade the severity, sugarcoat it, whatever you want to call it, right? They always want to whitewash it. There's all these issues with that. I'm not picking up a curriculum for how we're doing this. And what we're doing is just for the example, like I said, I'll have a detailed video later on about this. Um, we're chasing the Underground Railroad. And so even though, like I said, enslavement had a lot of negatives, I don't believe there are pros to enslaving human bodies. Uh, regardless of what curriculum say. That's where I was going with this. I went on a rabbit trail. The But the pros that we can see are not about the pros of enslaved people and how it helped economy. I'm sorry, I get really um sarcastic about this area of discussion. But my point is that there are there is beauty to find in the sense that humanity came together, right? And worked together to help people reach freedom. And so while chasing the Underground Railroad, understanding that it was a necessity out of something so horrible happening to people um, in slave states, that 
there was a lot of hope, a lot of community, a lot of bravery, a lot of camaraderie. There were a lot of human lives who were able to tell their stories and those stories to be passed down through books later on um, due to them just explaining their story while traveling the Underground Railroad. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's what I'm trying to get to is there's always beauty to be found in something. And so I love that projects like this can allow us to see the bad, but to also chase down and see the humanity in it all of, um, like the good side, like the good side of humanity, <laughs> because a lot of times things like African American history does have a lot of negative connotation to it. We want to talk about the really horrible parts, which are necessary to talk about but also we're leaving out a lot of the celebration in the midst of the um oppression that they faced in african-american history and so i think that chasing history in the way that we're going to do it which i'll explain some here but some in another video i think it's a good way to be able to show both sides so chasing history to be more specific um, i'm doing this video like off the top of my head nothing written down so it's kind of messy but so to be more specific when i say that we're chasing down history what i mean is that we are going to find as many um hands-on or visual or actual locations to go see that have to do with whatever we're learning. And I'll have a whole nother video, like I said, about the Underground Railroad and how we're doing it. But um, something you should know is Ohio is super rich in Underground Railroad history because we were the state with the most um, stations, the most underground stations and connections. So there's so much here to learn. And because they're so young, there's no need for me to go beyond Ohio. There's so much to learn here, not only just on the Underground Railroad, that's just the one we're starting with, but also the Native American history here. Another part of what I want to do going forward is I want to be able to, um, when it comes to history, especially US history, obviously I'm talking about right here, I want my kids to understand that this was and is indigenous people's soil, right? They were here long before colonialism and um, there's a lot of beautiful history that came with that. And it's important that we know that the land that we are living on came from indigenous people and to find ways to honor their culture and um, just everything surrounding them as much as we can. Because once again, thanks to American history and how we do things, they've had a lot of erasure they have been slowly erased from history and it's still continuing. And it's that's different from what's happening to African-Americans and other groups. Indigenous people specifically are being erased from history. And um, that's another reason we need to conserve as much of their history as possible. And that can be done with chasing history and being as hands-on as possible. Now, what's the why do I keep saying being hands-on and chasing history? And that's because I think that when you go to regular schools or you read most curriculums, what they do is they just fact shoot you. Okay, so it's just so and so on this date did this and here's the timeline. Is there anything wrong with that? Necessarily no, but I don't think that doing it that way specifically, so systematically, is what sticks to someone's mind. There's so many, I'm sure so many, many of us can agree that like we learned these things in history class, but then they kind of, once the tests were over, they left our brain and we can't remember that stuff. And the reason is because we didn't put it into a storytelling format. We were just doing fact shooting out of a book, setting down timelines and cold hard facts, but not getting that history behind it, right? We're not getting the story that emotionally appeals to us. And it's known that when you can put things into a storyline, they stick in your mind better. So that's another reason I want to do it this way because I'm able to customize and build these trips and visuals and other things that we're going to use and to make sure that we have a storyline to follow. And with following up by going to the places involved with these stories, it makes it even more real to understand that we are in those places. So like I said, back to the Underground Railroad, for us, it's doing things like going to the Harriet Beecher Stowe House, which is in our state. But I really don't wanna get too much into that. It'll, it'll take too long. And I hope all of this is making sense. Yeah, I'm basically, what I'm doing going forward is I am creating our curriculum, <laughs> loosely used, 
um, not by cold, hard curriculum, but by using books, right? Just your good old books, not a curriculum, just using books that are individual stories of the people we are talking about. I'm going to build and maybe use, like build and use curriculum in the sense of like unit studies. So um, right now we're studying Harriet Beecher Stowe. It's really easy to create a unit study around her or to buy one. And then you use books to dive deeper than even that unit study gives you. And then everything that they learn will come to a point of taking a field trip or something similar to that to really see firsthand as close as they can to um, like encounter that historical thing we're talking about. So I think that in the, I think that in the follow-up video, it'll make more sense if it's not, because I'll be able to use the actual facts of the Underground Railroad and how we're applying it to this chasing history idea that I have. Um, but yes, the gist is we actually start with the place we want to check out or the thing we want to check out. And then we find out the who, what, when, where, why, how of it. And we work backwards and create that curriculum or... I don't even want to call it curriculum, but you know what I'm saying? Like the things we're going to learn, we do all the work leading up to that point, And then it's followed up with that field trip that we first started by eyeing. Like I said, Harry Beecher Stowe House, that's the first thing we're going to learn about the Underground Railroad, considering how Southern it is. There are more Southern points though that we can discuss, but um, that is a good starting point, especially with understanding her history of um, seeing the slave states firsthand by crossing the river right there in Cincinnati, right? So that's why we're studying her. Uh, Ripley, Ohio, the Ripley House, another wonderful situation that we're going to study and follow up with a trip there. All right, but um, I will have a video soon where I more like I actually apply it more in the idea of showing you how it's going to look through the example of the Underground Railroad. So yeah, that is what we're doing. That's how we're handling history going forward. I'm not going to really waste a lot of time on curriculum at this point because it's really not that great. It's not that great out there. And I, I just want to be able to give my kids as factual history as I can. That takes time and that takes research on my side, on my part, which is fine. I'm totally fine with it. I'd rather that than the whitewashed BS that we're getting in a lot of these curriculums. But if you have any really cool ways that you do history, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. But I will see you guys in the next video and have fun homeschooling.